All right. So welcome. Uh, today we're going to listen to Nacho. It's going to present some uh, interesting stuff around TDD. Um, so, Nacho, do you want to take over? Um, yes. Uh, so thank you uh, for having me here. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to be from Barcelona talking to all of you. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Should I start then? Yes, please do. Okay, let's go. So let me see if I can share my presentation. Yeah, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, so first thing first, I have to say uh, thank you for having me here. Um, it's my pleasure to, to explain what I found uh, based on my experience around TDD. And I hope that this session will be interesting for you. Just for not wasting your time, basically, this is the overall idea of this session. So if something is wrong with the approach or something you want to, let's say, ask about it or you want to switch to another topic, just let me know, okay? Um, by the way, how, how, I would like to know, first of all, how many of you have been using TDD, let's say, in your day-to-day -day basics? I don't know if you can basically say something in the chat and, and then we can see how many people are used to TDD or how many people are uh, new to TDD or they struggling with practicing it because then I, I can, you know, move faster my, my approach in one place or one other. We do, I can see somebody who Anders already share. I don't know how many of you have been trying TDD or are playing with TDD mostly, okay. Only two from time to time. So yes, yes. Uh, pragmatic TDD. Oh, I'd like to know what, what this, this concept of pragmatic TDD means, but yes, okay. Uh, not as much I heard about it, not practicing. Okay, so I will say uh, probably half of the people are not not trying to do at least or are not practicing into day to day. Okay, so I think then the focus of the talk will not be really out of the of the idea uh, what, what I was coming but basically the, the overall idea is to, my idea was to explain about the basics about TDD and, and, and understand the basics. Uh, it means that then we are gonna be able to um, understand the benefits of writing the test first than doing it, doing it after. Um, and yeah, we will try to see an example. I will go really fast uh, with an example instead of doing it in live coding, I will show you some slides. And I hope you will learn some tips that I normally try to apply when, uh, um, uh, when I'm practicing uh, and applying TDD. So yes, the first idea is, are those topics. So I will not, I will, I will try to, to make the things say uh, faster and try to convince you that the, the, the topics are interesting. And so please don't, don't, don't run away. That's a moral, the overall idea. So yes, I didn't, I forgot to introduce me. I'm Nacho, I'm from Barcelona. I'm a senior software engineer at Dynatrace, uh, application performance monitoring. And yes, I love to, 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 to try and to use TDD and also extreme programming uh, techniques like pair programming, et cetera. And I started to write Java, well, long time ago. I founded the Barcelona Java Usage Group here in Barcelona and also the JBCN, uh, which is the Java and JB, J, Java, and Java Brittle Machine Barcelona Conference in Barcelona. So you want to, well, I would say that when you have, we will be able to enjoy a conference, I have to say that you are probably, uh, you will enjoy Barcelona and also a, a, a lovely, a lovely conference. So yes, I was also trying to, uh, not too long, too long ago, but I tried to uh, enjoy mountains by running it, running them. And I try to, from time to time, tweet something about uh, cloud computing, stream programming techniques, TDD, etc. So yes, at any time, please raise your hand. I don't know if uh, you have a mute or, or, or just ask, and I will try to answer your your question. Right? Um, and yes, the, I will be burning about it because basically this is something that I I get from different areas, from different my my experience is always there. So I it probably if I made a mistake, it will be because of my experience. Experience. Yeah, so that's the overall agenda of the session for today. I will try to go fast for, for everything. But uh, yes, this is the typical introduction about TDD, where this came from. And basically, every, probably all of you may know that this idea of writing the test before came from Ken Beck uh, more than 20 years ago. So this is not something really fancy, really new. And this is something that uh, it was related where the computers were 
uh, big machines, right? Where you we were they were using input tapes, and basically what what we what they want to do is basically verify that the output of the tape was exactly the one uh, that you you were uh, you were uh, expecting. No, so that's more or less the idea of the of this uh, frameworks, this X, uh, X, um, unit frameworks that basically they verified no the the output of the system based on an input that you already introduced. It. So that's more or less the idea, and and I would like to invite you right now at that point to imagine. A, 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 let's say a beautiful world, right? Where, where you can basically de detect uh, defects earlier. Uh, not when you are running something in production, but where are you designing something, right? Imagine that you're thinking on a possible solution, then you can write something and then detect that something you are missing, you, you already uh, identify that, right? In that way, you probably detect uh, some, some mistakes, some, some errors that you might found at some point and, and imagine also that this uh, mechanism to identify errors and design a, a, a APIs that you can use and also use another particular functionalities are basically uh, a, a steps that you can follow in a simple process. No, uh, That's more or less one of the most interesting things about it is they're not really complicated things. It's basically a simple process where you can uh, build software and basically will help you to do the things straightforward. And yes, you will be helping you to to see how then you can refactor your code because you have you will have let's say kind of a safety net uh, that will provide you some some basically safety for for just applying changes if something was failing your test will tell you so yet at the same time just continue imagine that that your software we're gonna give you an, a better idea of how you or somebody else will consume your 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 component the things that you already built uh, this is more or less uh, one of the ideas to build in the, the test first you're going to be designing your api before somebody else will consume it and also test will be kind of a live documentation you will see why um, so the software is likely to have less bugs and the, I, I share here two links uh, i will probably uh, i will upload the presentation by the way um, but there are two uh here i, I share two links uh, there are two abstracts that are already verified by by numbers let's say that the, there are those kind of practices will give you um really good arguments to to see that how your development cost will be lower than not applying it right so this is a kind of a, something that is demonstrated already so yes, are you gonna, this is something that you probably many people will ask me, okay, but you're then selling me the beautiful thing that's gonna uh, solve all of my problems. Well, I would say that not all of your problems, but I would say that you're gonna be, let's say, uh, uh, be more confident about your software and probably you're gonna be more more, more happier with it. But yes, it has a lot of disadvantages. Eh? Uh, it's, not, it's not so easy to start with. Uh, it's, it's really difficult to, uh, uh, I would say that there are a lot of places where you can learn something, but it's not really easy to understand. As I would say that high, high learning curve is one of the points around TDD. It depends exactly how complex is your code, how good is the uh, design, and how, uh, how you've been trying TDD before. So if you haven't tried before, sorry, it probably is not something that you can start with uh, in, a, in a legacy project where you have, I don't know, uh, hundreds of thousands of code that is not really covered by tests. And then it therefore can be a large investment in your team. So depending on the experience and depending on the number of uh, members and how uh, you have been you know, struggling with some particular areas, it will require more time and effort for you and your colleagues. So there are those, those advantages. So basically many people will, will came up with saying, okay, I have to try to another thing and, and this, this practice is not for me for many reasons. So at some point it provokes resistance with some people, right? And it's easy to, at some point to, to, to forget some steps or, or, or especially if you're doing uh, particular things, probably you're gonna miss something or you're gonna be you know, switching your 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 uh, uh, you let's say your roles, and then you are gonna mix you know different stages depending on where you're doing or how are you doing your your TDD let's say, and it can be let's say corrupted in terms of if you try to uh, leverage or, or have a, a, a high level of coverage, probably you you might think okay this TDD is not doing not not correct for me, but the problem probably is not how to apply the the practices of TDD by itself is about how why you are looking for uh, increasing the number of uh, level of coverage while your design for example is not that that good no so at the end it's kind of uh, I would say extremely difficult to make it really really. Uh, uh, let's say smooth and working for for your team um, yeah all of these combinations let's say makes tdd a bit difficult depending on the team or, or, or you know more so uh, i will compare it for the people that doesn't know anything about it it's like uh, well imagine so many of us probably all of us you know learned how to drive a bicycle um manage a bicycle let's say years ago but imagine now that you have to with the you know 
the, the, depending how old are you. Imagine now starting to ride a bicycle, but not the bicycle that, that is fit for you. Imagine another bicycle, right? And try to make it uh, work. It's gonna be kind of a weird for you, no? It's like, well, that's why I, I use this uh, comparison, comparison just to understand more or less how I understand to what it means learning uh, to ride a bicycle to uh, pl uh, let's say play and practice TDD because it's gonna be it's not gonna be easy for you uh, and, and, and it's kind of restarting because you already know how to drive a bicycle how to manage it but TDD gives you another different point of view how you can do that right and it's completely mind-blowing when you're starting to write something before as you're used to to do it right now no because normally all the people write production code and then come and say oh hey how, how we can test that so that's completely the, the switch that you have to do. But the point is that many people know the things that happen, beautiful things happen no, when you are out of your comfort zone. So that's the point about introducing or trying TDD. So let's let's go back, let's say for, the, for understanding how this magic can happen. And the magic is not that magic. It's basically this process, this simple process is the, is the, is the core process about TDD. You have to write, uh, a, a, let's say a test that could fail Basically, the, the point number one is this one. Understand that you have to build a test that fails, verify that it fails, put, put that test that fails on green. Let's say write the test that, write, sorry, write the solution that solves that test and then move to the next uh, last step that is basically see how we can change that. Be, if the behavior is, is working, how we can, let's say, improve the code that we have. So it's, it's something like define the expectations that you, that you want in the number, step number one. In the step number two, just create the enough code, the minimal code that satisfies that test. And then in the third one is basically see if we can clean the code or remove the application, et cetera. So it's, this, this flow is the, basically the pure flow that you have to follow on TDD. I don't know if we have to introduce uh, the rules by TDD by Robert Martin, but I think it's more or less interesting to just summarize it really, really fast. Basically, the point is explaining this similar things, but in another way. Uh, so you, do have, you are not allowed to write production code until it's not only, it's only for passing a unit test. So say in another way, building tests is the first activity, is the main activity or the, the guidance that give you an idea of uh, del delivering all the software that you're gonna do later on, right? And you cannot do more than a unit test. To, to fail to, to start doing something right it's, it's something like you you have to understand that these are our first first class citizens it means that you have to maintain it you have to create it and then you have to uh, of course uh, evolve it right and don't do more than a unit test okay and uh, yes, yeah, so basically, not allowed. You, you, you are not allowed to write production code. Any anything that is not, let's say, sufficient to pass. This is, I think, the stream, uh, the stream description. By 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 the way, is about you are not allowed to write anything from production that is not uh, enough to uh, cover a, cover a test. So it's something like, okay, let's make the test pass and do the simple thing that you can do. Is more or less how how I rephrase that. Um, yes, let's continue then with some good habits I would like to mention. And just as we now we have more habits, no different habits like you no know, cleaning or, or washing our hands uh, really frequently. Uh, I, I, I will recommend you a few things that I normally try to apply when practicing with TDD. So the first thing is to double check that the test uh, that you think is, is failing is already failing because when you are writing something normally you for example you have a back in production what you can do for demonstrate that this is already failing in production what if you can go and write a test that demonstrates that this test is read and then try to solve it right this is one of the best the, the, the best thing but when you are starting with TDD one of the best things that you normally do is to write a test and forget about running the test and then this test normally well it depends on the flow but it depends when you are trying it uh, this test could be in red in green and therefore you will not be able to solve it because already solved so that's one of the reasons that just step by step right write the test that's in red run the test and verify that the test is in red and then continue so try to solving it one of the other uh, things that probably is really easy to understand, and depending on the project, I've seen different approaches, but I would say that uh, having only one reason to fail uh, helps you 
uh, when you have any problems, go there and see the only reason why this test is failing. And this is something really uh, interesting because then it will give you, uh, let's say, a, a, a particular example of how it's really easy to understand and fix that problem. Because if you have more than one, probably you have to struggle first how to solve that and then solve that, and then it's going to be more difficult. Then and and also the other thing that I will I will recommend you when you're writing tests is basically write assertion first, and you will see you will see I'm talking about the order later on how to how to to do it. Um, other, other tips that I normally use is to try to use a particular naming convention that helps me and my team to understand what the code does and what the test is trying to do. So the first thing I try is to rename a class instead of uh, the test class, by the way, instead of doing it like uh, ending with a particular test, I try to rename it with should. And you will say, why you are trying to do that? Well, basically because in this particular way, all the people that came after and will see what we are doing, basically will understand that all my methods are describing poor behavior because I'm starting with, okay, this parser should and what, we, what, what, what else we, we are going to do? Okay, it depends on the method, but in this case, in the first one, we are going to describe in pure English what is going to happen. Okay, it's going to fail because of whatever. It's going to return what in this case. So in this way, all your behavior is going to be pure phrases in English. Otherwise, you will see probably you happen to you, at least it happened to me, that depending on the test, depending on the team, all the methods are completely, let's say, uh, they have, completely pure freedom to describe whatever in the way they want. And it happens that, that from time to time, I don't, I, I'm not able to understand what the, the test is doing or what the scenario is, are the people are trying to, to make, no? And this way, if you try to do it in that way, you will see that at the end, our test describing only behavior will help you to understand much better what if you collapse, let's say all those tests, you will see that the, the particular class, in this case, will understand perfectly all the scenarios that are covered. And, and, and it will be much easier to understand and for, for all of you, will give you much understanding about this, this let's say, worth the, 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 what the, the, the class is doing and how it's trying to, let's say, cover some scenarios. And you don't need to, of course, need it, go into the details if you don't need it. So from time to time, you have to see the details Details because somebody something fail, but in those cases, for example, you don't need to go there to understand what is the pure behavior or uh, getting out of the details. Okay, about about what the internals of the class. So I mentioned before about the order of the test. Uh, let, let's see how, how I try to make the things happen. So I try to start with this, with the name of the class, just to renaming it. Of course, you have to try to change the CI CD, but to, to, to explain that this should should be uh, running as a, as a test, but this is something that's really easy to, um, to make it with Surfire, POM, uh, Maven, or Gradle. And then the second thing, of course, is create the method that the expectation that we want to cover. And then the third one is I would like to describe the, the things because basically, Applying TD means that I, I would like to focus first on the on the on the first thing that is basically solve the test. And to solve the test, I, the first thing I normally try to do is to uh, introduce the session. In that way, I will see yes, I read a big red line in this in this line number three, uh, or in the steps of number three, where I can see that the state doesn't exist and also the previous state doesn't exist. But basically, this is something that my my IDE will help me. And then I try to uh, go up, let's say, and trigger the code. So what I have to do is to create that state, okay? This is something that I, in this case, I, something that returned by the, the method that I'm going calling. And of course, I have to trigger that code to see that this assertion is gonna be uh, something that I can do because of this uh, execution that I did, by, I can do before, right? And then I have to do the setup. So from, from this perspective, I go from the bottom, to, to, to the option up to, to cover, let's say, everything I need to see that all of this is, is done, but I will not go, uh, let's say, on the, on the, from the before, let's say, on the setup of the test, because it's something that I can do and I have to try to do when I have the full picture of everything that I need for my test. Yeah, and in fact, it, in this case, for example, because it, it requires another component that is a repository, it is something that it will take me a bit of time to describe that. So that's why I try to describe first what, what I expect. And then I try to go step by step and see which dependencies or which elements do we know I need. No. So I found that basically to do this calculation in this case, I need something else that gives me, uh, I don't know, a result or a, a complete uh, a valid date, a valid uh, number, right? This is something that uh, another component that is the repository I've been injecting in uh, this calculator, right? So this is something that depending on how you do it is going to be struggling for you more in one way or another. Yes, how to start, I will say that there are many ways to do it. I will say that many of the 
many of the simple ways to do it is doing it in small steps, no? doing it in katas, in proof of context, in personal projects where you can play with it and see if this flow is going to understand by your side, let's say, and practicing a bit, no? and practicing with your communities, practicing with your pairs. And of course, when I was talking about pairs, I would say that uh, doing it with somebody else will, will, will help you a lot. A uh, few words about pair programming for many people that doesn't know what it means. It means instead of only one person, let's say driving and, and writing a code, means uh, working with, uh, with somebody else, let's say focus on the same session, the same, let's say Zoom session as we are doing right now. But uh, let's say with, with the role of writing and, and, and seeing what we are doing with somebody else. This means that the code is going to be shared by, by two persons at the same time. It's going to be drive, driving in another direction and probably it's going to be um, much easier and, 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 and you're going to do a review, a constant review versus doing a pull request, let's say later on, which is normal uh, on those days. So the idea is to have in two roles, one is the driver and the other the navigator. And the idea is to, while the driver is write, writing, let's say the solution uh, or going and solving the particular problem, the observer is thinking about going fast, going faster, going forward or going longer. And that's the way of one has this, let's say the, the, the direction of something that is really focused on solving something now. And the other, the other person is going to, let's say doing a approach on the tactical way. With this approach, if you try to do TDD by yourself, it's gonna be, uh, let's say, I will say it's really difficult, but if you do it, you try to make it with somebody else, you will see that it's already uh, a different experience because somebody else will help you. No, try to do this first or don't, don't go too fast. Don't, don't move to the next step because this test is already, uh, haven't, we haven't tried that this test is already failing. So these kind of things, when you do and try it with pair programming will help you a lot, I would say. Um, so yes, if none of the questions, I will continue with the example. So uh, we'll continue, this is the, let's say, um, I will explain this a little bit, but uh, let's imagine that we arrive right to a, to a, to a company uh, and they give us an idea of, of a particular application. So right, we are arriving to a company that they, they basically are focused on, on selling and rent, renting films over the internet. Something that probably many of you may know. And our owners or managers, they said, okay, we want to add new functionalities, uh, just creating a new service, a recommendation service that will give us uh, some fields based on genre, right? On a particular genre. So if the user can introduce a genre and the, the service could give back to us uh, and this uh, list of films, right? And the idea is that those films should have at least a title, year, you know, uh, many tags, for example, and some genres. And at the same time, this service uh, should return the list of, of movies or films just ordered by, by, let's say, for the rating average that normally the users give. No, so yeah, I like the I like the movie, but I will share. Can I, I will save it as a nine or both for eight, seven? These kind of things, you know, more or less. And here you can see an example of how to do that, right? Uh, uh, an example of a call and how we can we can do it. So now I will try to make it, let's say, in, in even not in live demo, but just to do it in slides a bit a bit faster. But this is the as I mentioned before, right, this is the, the one of the simple approaches I will try to make it will be just describe the first test that is, yes, I know I have to return a list of films just ordered by genre, right, and and sorry, uh, by genre, but ordered by average rate. And that's the that's the way, you know, starting with the assertion and then see how the, 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 the ID in, in that term is telling me, okay, this, I don't know anything about this service, then I'm gonna, with the help of my ID, just try to create that instance of this of this object and see how we can continue. So yes, I create that instance, this object, and then at the same time, the next step is okay. I don't know anything about this method that is filmed by genre. Please, can you help me with that? Yes, I, and then the, the next step for me is just create that method and do not implement it, right? So now what I'm doing is this defining, you no, know, the, the contract that I expect. This is something that when you are doing TDD is really interesting, at least for me, that is when you are building the test, you are at least at some point, well, I, I would say that it, the, the step number 1.1 .1 is you are designing something. So at this at these terms, when I'm defining the method, I'm defining the signature about the parameter and at the same time the result. What it means I'm designing the solution. Now the, the problem is that okay, I cannot I cannot compile because I don't know anything about this film. Okay, let's continue creating this this object that is the film and then continue with the last step that should be uh, verify something. No, I have already the signature of the method. Now I have to define what I expect. 
And now in this, in this scenario, what I want to do is to cover this as a, as a result, what, what I want to see as a, as a result of this after calling that service, right? So let's, let's create then a first, a first film that could be, well, the Matrix, probably many of you have seen this movie. I like it very much, to be honest. And then this movie was, has an example. It has the title, has the year of publishing, has some tags, and also has some genres. Right, nothing really fancy. And as you can see, this list is the list I'm passing through this method. This is something I we did, uh, we did uh, before. Uh, so as you can see, the compiler again is telling me, okay, Nacho, what are you doing, man? I don't know anything about this constructor of this film that is passing us through a lot of things, but I don't know anything. Okay, let's continue with this approach, building, designing what I understand about is a film. And a film, we, we, we know because our managers told us before, we need these things, no? That are the things that already that we already know. And then we would, what we do basically is to do the minimal one, just to, to compile the solution, which is basically assign those fields to the, to the object that I, I, we already know, right? It's a film can be compiled by this thing. So now I have the, color, the, the, the test is already, let's say, defi defined. It's, it's already, let's say, in pure state where, where we basically have everything. And the compiler is saying, okay, I, I know that now is not red, but the test is not red. So let's, let's at the end, add a new one because I would like to, at this point, not only retrieve one, one movie, just to be able to better demonstrate the other thing, which is basically be ordered by, by, by average rate. For doing that, I will need at least two movies. Right, so that's why in this step I introduce another another movie. Nothing really fancy. I created another one, which is in this case Star Wars. Uh, is, is ordered by a particular case. Matrix will be let's say more rated than Star Wars. Well, probably many of you will like the in the other way around, but in this case, this is something that we define in that way. Yes, so now. I can run that test and see how this test is failing, right? Okay, and you will see, okay, that's that's correct, Nacho. At, at, the, at the line seven on the service, you are basically, you are failing, you're throwing an exception, and this is not correct. That's true, but this is the way of applying TD. I mean, I wrote some, some tests. This is the test on the left-hand side, and I verify that the test is failing. Now, what I have to do, I will I would like to do basically is to return that list. Yes, if you, many of you will tell me, okay, in the line seven, you can create a new list that contains exactly the same thing that you're doing on the left-hand side and the problem is solved. That's true. But as you, as you may know, what I want is basically to design a solution that could help me or could use another component, right? To be able to not mix components at the same place. So that's why I try to define at that point, designing a solution that can give me for a service. What if I find something else that can you know, connect to something else that can connect or retrieve those that, that data, for example. No? At that point, what I'm gonna think is probably a repository is a something I can use for getting that information from, from the, let's say for the persistence or for whatever layer we are, I'm using, but just for connecting could be, a, for example, an API that can give me back the list of uh, films. But at this case, I decided for a repository. Imagine that I have access to the database and I would like to use this film repository. So at the same time, I introduced this film repository I inject it as a constructor in this service. And I tried then, I will try to use it, right? Uh, so right now, I inject it as a field and nothing really fancy. Still, the method is failing. So if I try to run the test again, uh, nothing really happened no, in terms of affection of this test. The next step probably is to call that film repository and uh, basically see that I, I can call it and retrieve some information. No? So now I'm calling this repository that is telling me, well, this method, I want to use it in that way. And also I want to, let's say, use it in this method that could be ordered by average rate. Of, as you can see, the, the, the ID in this case is telling me, okay, I don't know anything about this method that you're trying to connect or use in film repository at the same time, I don't know anything about the rate. Well, let's continue with this, which is basically, let's say, fill the gaps and build that repository that basically is not doing anything at all, but also creating a, a disenum that basically can, can help me to order the things in one way or another. This, this is a design that I decided in that way. Could be, uh, let's say, a solution valid or not, but in this case, it worked for me. So now let's run again. Again, I have another another different, uh, let's say, problem, which is basically that the film is not initialized properly. I basically instantiated, no, I haven't done in the left hand side on the line 20. You can see the film repository is, is, is null, is not uh, assigned anywhere, right? And now the question is, okay, what, what do I have to do to use exactly to, to solve that problem, but not, not to do, doing it in the proper way. 
Let me wait here for a second because the problem here is basically that many people in uh, Unitest will connect to the database and then therefore things might, might start you know, getting wrong because at the end you are gonna start coupling your result with the database and then you're gonna have some problems because the database is not the development one, is that I need a, a new one in local. So there are things that may happen that's why you have to understand that probably, uh, as, a, as a good recommendation, I would say, uh, you don't you don't probably need to mix unit tests by integration tests. And that's at this, at this point when I'm trying to understand that my approach was trying to go on a service that uses a repository and the repository could connect to the database. But in this case, I don't want to mix those, those two things. I probably might need one integration test while I have hundreds, if not thousands of, of uh, unit tests because the, the complexity of those are not the same. And also the, as you may know, the, the test pyramid should be, let's say that the base of the unit test should be more than the unit test, uh, the integration test. So that's why at this point I'm, I was thinking, okay, what I have to do to solve that problem and see how I make it, uh, let's say, more uh, easy to maintain, okay? And what I think is, okay, probably what I have to do is to use a mock element that can imagine and this is a scenario where I'm connected to a database, I can retrieve some information and the service will get back this information from the repository when the repository is in implemented. And that's why I introduced it on the left-hand side, Mokito, right? Where I can mock the repository, define the expectations and see that the result is what I, what I think. At this point, you can see that the result is still is not, uh, is not correct because basically I haven't defined the condition. So as you can see here, the result is, okay, I was expecting these two films, but I haven't received anything. Okay, so let's fill again the expectations, kind of doing the setup of this test and end up defining, okay, when I receive these, those parameters, this is the result the repository will give me you know, on the line 33. Right, so what I'm doing is, okay, this list of films is the list of films that the repository will, will get back to me. And now, finally, I guess the, 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 the test is already, uh, let's say in green, I'll pass it from red to green. What I have to do right now, well, probably what I have to do is to, now I have another piece, I created another piece from the service to the repository, probably what I have to do is to build something on the business of the repository, otherwise our code will not work in production. That's why we have started a new flow on the, uh, let's say, test, but in the, in the repository. There are different things on this scenario, but now the problem is that I'm not working as a unit test, I'm working as an integration test. You can see on the left-hand side on the line seven, where I'm talking about the uh, IT test. This is something that is a bit different because I'm, I will use basically a real database because the implementation of getting the information from, I don't know, from Postgres to, to Oracle or to another database that could be NoSQL is a bit different. And then my implementation could, could be different. And that therefore I'm gonna use an integration test to have a connection and to get a real result from the database because I want to basically define a real implementation of this repository, be able to use it in production. Now what I want to do is to do similar thing, define expectations and see how uh, the, the things that happen, my IntelliJ is telling me the, the, the similar things that I would like to call that film repository with these parameters and these expected films. So the result is that I don't have those values. That's okay. So let's fill those values for accessing the similar field that I did for the service, I created a, well, I moved basically the constant that I have in the other service to a new class. And then these this components, these constants, let's say, are gonna be used in the two different, in the two different um, objects. No, the, the, the service and the repository test could use the same constant. So then I try to do these things and then run the test. As you can see, because the implementation is not done, nothing really happened because I haven't I haven't implemented yet. So let's go there and, and do that. How I did that in this case, I, I did that in, as an integration test, I introduced a few new dependencies to try to minimize the problem, which is basically, I don't want to, I don't know, implement a new, uh, a new uh, pool for connecting to the database. And I don't want to, you know, connect to a real database because then I, I need to. So what I, one of the options that I use is, is use test containers. And it's basically a tool where you can basically run in your local machine to pop up, let's say a container with a particular image, in this case, Postgres I used, and then pop up this, uh, pop fill up with some information, with some data, and then run your test against this image and then shut it down with the result. 
that's more or less what I did. On the left hand side, you can see how the setup of the of the test is uh, already finished, more or less, which basically defining the progress instance and the line 22. But uh, basically, I'm saying, okay, I want to post a progress image of that version. And with this script, that is the init script, I will show you in a minute, I will try to run this, po this progress image. And then I'm going to try to get a data source on the line 40, where I basically compile and use Hikari as a, an open source. Um, project for using JDBC uh, uh, connection pools and uh, providing new connection pools. And basically I defined that to be able to use it and to define a data source. So in this case, now that I have this setup done on the test side, I can just populate, let's say, or just uh, run or compile say, the solution for the repository, which is basically go to the database and give me the result. It's basically the, 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 this summer, this uh, sum, uh, sorry about the result ordered by average about all those films and doing the join about the data, whatever. This is the, the thing that on the right hand side you can see. This is not the simple, uh, a simple solution following the simple TDD, um, but this is an example of how you can, let's say, with this flow of TDD, you can go and implement something and get the information from the database. And you, as you can see on the method uh, uh, read film, is basically what I'm doing is having a result set, getting all the information from the columns. Nothing really fancy, basically calling the database, getting back the result, and then parsing and getting a, a result back. And on the left hand side, finally, uh, I introduce it here. So just to have an idea, the, the different tables that we can use. Let's imagine that I have a no users from one side, films by the other side, and the ratings by the other side. So as you can see on the line 30 to 32, uh, these are the films, Matrix, Star Wars, and App. I like it very much in this film, by the way. I recommend you very much. And the last ones on the line 34 to 39 are, are the ratings. So what, what the users have been voting, um, by, by, for example. No? So for example, we have here one, two, three, four, five. This matrix has an eight, a nine, and an eight. And Star Wars has only seven. So probably the uh, matrix will be the first one. Uh, Star Wars will be the second one. And up will not come back from the database because HAP doesn't have this science fiction uh, genre in the last, in the, in the line 32. So you can see there is a, a row that is was insert, but it was not with science fiction genre. So after this, basically the, the result of this, uh, of this same test, it was not working because uh, yes, I forgot to do something, which is basically define the methods that for comparing objects in Java, I need, which is basically the equals, the hash code, or to a string to understand much, much better what is happening. And now the result of the, of the test is, is working. So now the result is already working, the service is done, and I would say that the tests are, are, are fine. And also the solution, let's say, is, is is working. So at the end, it's kind of a, we implemented a solution based on a particular implementation. Yeah, there are many others to make it uh, happen, let's say. But at the end, our service is 100% covered by test, and the repository is also covered by test. So the functionality that we designed is already, let's say, uh, verified that is working. And yeah, that's uh, the example I have to do for um, recommendations for continuing with TDD or, or, or yes, uh, or applying it. I would say that there are a lot of content online. I would recommend those uh, main concepts uh, that Martin Foley explained better than me for sure. And there are some practices around different languages for JavaScript or for Java that you can have a look online. And uh, I would say that recommending content, I would recommend for sure these content that are uh, or everywhere. So I mean, books are, I would say, one of the best ways of uh, learning a few things. And uh, one of the books that I like the most probably is the Growing Object Oriented Software Guided by Test, where you will learn from, let's say, from the zero to 100, what it means TDD, how to understand it, how to apply. TDD by example, the one by Ken Beck probably is a bit uh, basic in terms of introduction and probably idealize it a bit the solution, but again, it's still valid for understanding how it works. Uh, the art of unique testing is more for C sharp developers, but I, I think it's also really easy to read and really easy to manage. And the last one about the practical guide, uh, TDD, yes, just driving development a practical guide, we say that there are some really nice examples with the uh, graphical user interface and some real examples. So I think, yes, that's to the final recap. Uh, I think it was more as clear, I hope it was clear to, to uh, explain that TDD 
let's give you a let's say an, a, a better way and a simple effective way to develop software uh sometimes yes it's difficult to adapt and, and i would say that depending on the team it's going to be more difficult to my practicing to maintain it but uh yes i think it worth it worth a try there are some numbers already there that give you uh pure values about the the software you're going to build it's going to be easy to maintain they're, they're going to have less bugs and going to be and the people will be really even more happy I will sh uh, share with you some some of the tips I, I think could make your life, uh, let's say, easier. Uh, and of course, I will recommend you to try to pair. I think it will help you a lot to just continue with this flow to help you with any particular mistake you can make and share with uh, with your colleagues how this uh, thing about doing TDD works. And yes, I think it requires time. You have to practice, practice, and practice. So, yeah. So that's it from my part. I don't know if you have any, any other questions, any questions. All right, thank you very much. Uh, could you please um, share the links in the chat? Yeah, So I will. everybody could, could navigate to them? Good. Yes. All Let right. You think it might more sense to upload